Hey guys, welcome to day 24. Um, sorry, I've got music on. By the way, I should share this. So this is es Estes Tone. I hope I pronounced it right. So beautiful. Um, anyway, I sometimes listen to that when, I, uh, when I'm working and it's really pretty. Um, but yeah, just in the background, I'll put a link in the thing. But anyway, cool thing about today. So I'm back in Atlanta and um, essentially in the pre-recorded videos, I am in Colorado right now. And it's kind of, it's a little bit divine timing because today was a day that I got to Colorado and I'd taken a couple of days off. And so I did like a big recap on everything we'd learned so far. And then I think I showed the snow out of the window or whatever. But as it would be today, the day that I'm posting this, um, today was the end of the conference here in Atlanta. And so I thought to re-record this video so that I can include and share a little bit on that. So um, first off, basically, yes, we have gotten to a point where we have got quite a bit of options for meditation. We've talk, talked about open awareness, focusing on the breath, zazen meditation, zazen with walking, body scanning. And then with the body scanning, I'm not sure I got too into it, but there is love and kindness meditation. And I think I discussed a lecture I went to with Greg Braden where he said to think of someone that you have so much appreciation for or a memory where it brought you about so much joy and then you send that to places in the body. And he talks about like places that might have injury. But what if we even sent that to um, areas that might feel hurt or blocked, like um, your heart, maybe, um, or you don't feel grounded. So, And then, of course, we have mantras for the chakras. We have mantras that have no association, and then we have sort of intentions that do have association. So as you can see, there's lots to choose from. And um, for me personally, I do uh, tend to use the mantra-based meditation. And when I say mantra, uh, I mean it in the truest sense where it is a word that beholds no association to me whatsoever. And I use it like an anchor. Um, for me, mine has two syllables and it's just almost like this little thing that sort of takes me down within into a deeper state of consciousness. And my intention is, um, my very loose intention is to transcend. And if it happens, wonderful. If it doesn't, it's still a wonderful journey. Sometimes I have an intuitive thought and um, sometimes I just truly relax deeply. And side note is, is like scientifically, I've looked at some of the e EEGs for the various types of meditations and ones that take people supposedly deeper than others. Um, and so there's, there's a benefit to really all of these. Uh, I don't tend to do guided meditations because me personally, I listen to them, to what they're saying. And, um, but I'm sure that that even brings about, uh, a pretty cool sense of, uh, relaxation. So what I'd like for you to do, um, over the next couple of days, as we segue into some of the more information based, uh, videos, cause I'm going to be talking about energy specifically, but I'd like for you to sort of play around with the um, different techniques and start to determine what's working really good for you and what you want your practice to look like. Um, but yes, the point of re-recording this video was is I wanted to share with you um, my experience this morning. And that is that for the closing of the conference, they went over step 11. And there was this like really amazing speaker. And uh, her name is Jennifer Kay. And um, anyway, she's absolutely hilarious, by the way. But uh, I did learn of a new resource, and it's called um, wejoy.org. And you can find Jennifer K. out of Texas on wejoy.org. And I'll put a link below, um, along with the music and whatever else I discuss. I'll figure that out later. But, um, but yeah, so she said that basically she likes to call her meditation practice, um, the time that, uh, she, it's her, her appointment, her appointment for the day. 
And it's how she shows up for herself every single day, like without fail. And essentially what she does is she sits down or, or whatever. She has a chair for herself, but she also pulls up another chair or has another seat for God. And she essentially is holding space for God to show up in her practice that morning. And she said she's just amazed at how many times, like as she sits there with the chair for God, that she might have some thought that didn't come from herself. And maybe she thinks um, randomly of a person she hasn't thought of in a long time. Um, you know what's so funny is just then I slid my finger and that was a friend from California that is really close to me and I thought of him this morning and he just texted. Um, anyway, he and I always talk about meditation and light Watkins stuff. We went to events together, so that's, that's kind of funny. Don't you just love synchronicity? But anyway, back to Jennifer Kay. So she was saying that she holds the space for God. She goes into her meditation. She has these thoughts, and it's either like maybe the way to handle a situation or a decision to make or a person, and she's just so amazed at how it turns out to be the right decision, or she sees that person later on that day. So I just wanted to share that with you and tomorrow we'll be getting back into energy and I know I've gone over by about two minutes today, so I apologize, but happy meditating and more to come. All right. Bye.